às vezes eu fico pensando, bom, mas o que, como é que eu vim parar nesse lugar, sabe? O que, que te trouxe até aqui, né? Born in Sao Paulo, Brazil, Carlito Carvalhosa, 1961-2021, lived most of his life in Rio de Janeiro. One can count Carlito Carvalhosa among the most creative and brilliant carioca artists of his time. He was able to embrace a truly radical legacy left by several generations of Brazilian artists who preceded him. He brought their achievements to new, unprecedented dimensions in terms of concept, form, and scale. Eu não fiz um planejamento para ser artista. Foi acontecendo. Eu tinha interesse em arte, mas eu achava que a ser desenhista só em quadrinho, na verdade, cartunista. Aí, quando eu tinha 20 anos, eu fui fazer arquitetura. A escola me deixou muito frustrado. Eu não estava funcionando para mim. Eu comecei a fazer outras coisas paralelamente com amigos meus que tinham interesse em arte. A gente fez um ateliê junto, que era o que eu queria, na verdade. Aquilo funcionou naquela idade. Eu ficou claro que era o que eu queria fazer. Não havia muita estrutura, assim, como tem hoje. Não tinha muita informação. As coisas eram diferentes, assim. Eu comecei como pintor, como a ideia era uma coisa ligada à pintura. Carlito Carvalhosa was, alongside other artists, among those who embraced in Brazil the avant-garde of painting by the second half of the 1980s. For instance, transcending the legacy of the modern monochrome, which was grounded on the perceptual stability of the visual field, Carvalhosa addressed monochromatic painting based on its explicit material instability. This investigation led Carvalhosa to brilliantly delve into the potentialities of three-dimensional painting. Havia um desejo, que era uma coisa de você ter uma relação que tem que a superfície da pintura está em conflito com a imagem, né? E aquilo tem uma brutalidade na imagem e, ao mesmo tempo, uma sofisticação na pintura que gera uma tensão estranha, aquela superfície fica vibrando, assim, né? Com o tempo, eu comecei a fazer outras coisas, principalmente eu comecei a trabalhar com cera, pintar com cera, que é algo que não se fazia muito. E daí eu comecei a fazer esses trabalhos com os dedinhos, essas coisas que têm um desejo de escultura. E essas coisas todas conversam entre si muito através dessa relação entre uma espécie de tensão entre a superfície, a pele e o volume, uma tensão entre o espaço e o lugar. Ou seja, que aquilo que você vê não é o que você toca, aquilo que você toca não é o que você vê. Então tem uma série de sinais cruzados assim, né, que fazem com que o trabalho não valha só pelo que está dentro dele, mas também porque está em torno dele e na relação entre os trabalhos. In the early 1990s, Carvalhosa initiated a series of works on wax, after having experimented various possibilities of painting with that material. The works produced during this period were the object of several exhibitions between 1994 and 1996, including ephemeral lost waxes, sculptures, alongside opaque and rich wax paintings, ceramic, glass, and porcelain. A key aspect of his work was related to multimedia, architecturally commanding and monumental installations, often made in collaboration with musicians and poets, such as his friends Philip Glass, Arnaldo Antunes and Arto Lindsay. These works defied the conventional setting of the gallery, as well as the limitation of the White Cube institutional exhibition space. either intervening the acclamation palace in Salvador of Bahia, the modern basement cave at the Museum of Contemporary Art in Sao Paulo, or the monumental Marron Atrium at the Museum of Modern Art in New York, Carvalosa never stopped critically questioning the limits of art's conventions. Oh my God, this is so exciting, isn't it? It's unbelievable. It's something amazing. You turn this corner and you're in a different world. He's some of these installations, for example, its enormous, fluid, porous and fragile form contained the space rather than being contained by it. 
a sculpture of sound, it was also a sculpture of time. Carvalhosa's attention to what was there before we were, the found, the accident, the materially overlooked, was essential in his production. Notably successful and emblematic of his art was his landmark intervention at the Museum of Morenar in Rio de Janeiro, featuring a volume representing the inverted shape of the famous mountain known as Sugarloaf, Pau de Azúcar, a work titled No Without His Signature Form of Humor. It was already as such when I arrived. A large body of Carvalosa's work is constituted by mirrors as support for painting, as well as aluminum surfaces also painted and often impacted from behind as to show the swelling of the surface and its structural three-dimensional nature. A brilliant painter beyond canvas, Carvalosa continued to produce these works until the end of his life. Particularly relevant are examples where the artist included language, wit, deconstructed phrases serving often as titles that can be found on the very surface of the mirror paintings. Carvalosa's untimely passing interrupted a tireless production of serial paintings on wax, where the artist stands out as a brilliant colorist and as a contemporary master of indexical marks. In these works, Carvalosa seems to revisit the whole Brazilian repertoire of concrete painting, clear colored shapes organized in rhythmically serial configurations, however, inscribing them on the rough, marked, indexical and ambiguous surfaces of wax as a beautiful dance between forms and the formless. Mm -hmm. 